Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And today, I had to make a decision, because obviously I have not yet put out a showcase on the new Veldora. Because, quite honestly, I've been using him for all the other showcases, and so if you haven't really picked up on, my, on what he does, and how good he is, and how good he leads the space team, and I think you need to go rewatch those videos. Especially the ones where I have to nuke for forever with Milam. Whether it be the Masked Hero um, battle, or if it was my let's go to a thousand percent just for funsies video. So you should know by now what Veldora does. So I don't think I need to do a showcase just dedicated to him. So today, I decided that I will make a showcase between Veldora and Cabby, because that is a question that I see a lot right now. If you don't pull Veldora, can you still make the space team work with Cabby? If you don't have Cabby, will Veldora take his place? You know, is one better than the other? We're gonna find out today, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, people of the world. Uh, because, honestly, personally, right now, I think Cabby's better. But, Maybe I'll change my opinion of uh, Veldora as we record this video. This might be a long video, heads up, because I'm gonna, I have to test out like each version of the team, which is gonna be the same team, like, except for two things, is one has Cabby and Valentine, and one has Veldora and Frey. You know, regardless of if, you know, Frey is free to play in level 100 and my Valentine's 84 and not free to play, uh, that, that doesn't matter. I only use them for the, I'm only using them for the orb change. Like literally nothing else. Maybe Valentine's heal, but whatever. This is the same team. Alt boost, attack boost, crit boost, DPS. Alt boost, attack boost, crit boost, DPS. Literally the only difference is the the orb changer. <laughs> so you can't fault me for this. But I have to take both these teams into each stage, and run them. You know in tandem and see, you know, what works better, what turn I can kill faster, how many alts I get, how often I can get everyone online, that's all going to be calculated in this video, so it's going to be a long video. Like, probably 30 minutes of plus. Buckle up, kiddos. We're in for a ride today. Alright guys, before we move on to the actual, like, Veldora versus Cabby debate, um, I thought I'd throw this in here, so... I would like to see a different comparison. How much a 50% stack of the Veldora alt boost compares to a 50% stack of the Space Veldora space attack boost. So we have stacked up, uh, okay, so we can show here. So we've stacked up 50% from the Wind Veldora, so maximum power. And then we're going to use the primary buffs that you would find on the new space team. So we're not going to use the Pierce, because I'm not bringing Dark Sheon, Dark Sheon on the space team. But let's go ahead and use the alt boost here. And then I'll go ahead and bring... Nope. I'll bring Milim in for Milim. And then I'll bring the hero in for Sheon. And now we can use the attack boost, the space attack boost, the crit, and then the drago. And we will see, you know, what our baseline damage is right here. And then we'll compare it to a 50% extra space attack boost on Milim next. So this does... 125.9. 125.9. So let's come back and see the difference in damage output between the two protectors. Okay, we are back. And so, I've only used four stacks of Veldora technically because he already gives Milim 12%. So, 52% after four stacks is the closest I can get to a 50% boost equivalent from the Wind Veldora since he obviously does not boost Milim naturally. So, 52, 2% extra space attack technically but we have you know the same amount of skill points and so we're going to do the same amount of buffs so the attack boost the space attack boost the drago the windmill and buff and then we'll bring in uh ba -ba -ba, the hero and add her buff in there as well 
Okay. So, as close as we can get to equivalent levels of boost. And how much damage do we do here? I think it was like, what, 129.9 or something like that? Somewhere close? And we do 135.1. I'm going to have to go back and check. Hold on. Yeah, the previous did, previous one did 125.9, so 52% uh, Veldora is obviously, you know, already 2% more buff, technically, than a 50% Wind or wind Veldora boost, but 2% is not going to overcome that kind of difference. That was like a 10k difference, and 2% is not that. So, already... Veldora will match or exceed the damage for a space unit versus Wind Veldora's ultimate boost, but only for a space unit, obviously. So that's just interesting science right there. Let's move on to the actual showcase. Alright guys, I've been searching around and surprisingly difficult to find a neutral battleground where we can test a team of space using, you know, focusing on greens versus a space team focusing on blues, and that pretty much narrows it down to the new tempered edge stages, because Sky Dragon nerfs blues, while well, most of Crucible, where you use space units at high level, nerfs blues, so it's not a very fair testing ground. So we're just gonna run tempered edge EX2. Uh, this is the space team with Frey, obviously, and Veldora. So we'll see how well this runs and, like, kind of damage output, turn restrictions, how often we get ults, how fast can we build up damage. Uh, it's... we'll just kind of have a, a fun testing ground. So here, actually, we have a decent hand, so I'm just going to flip out Milim for the hero. And I'm just going to send these two blues, that way we can maybe have a full hand of Frey next turn that we can then flip into a whole hand of Space Millum. And it almost worked out. It almost worked. It's close enough. It'll get us an ult gauge, or a, a protection meter at the very least. So let's swap you out. And then we'll go ahead and start building up that 10% with Veldora. So the thing about the blue team is, since Veldora doesn't boost blue gauge by himself, it's kind of difficult to get him online if you don't ever get blue hands. And it's like, yeah, you could have this happen, and then you just bring Frey in, and then everything's hunky-dory. I'm eating my own words as I speak. So the possibility does exist where you will get terrible RNG and never get a blue orb, which means that you will very likely not be able to build up Veldora all that quickly. But, on the other hand, this can happen too, where you can get this. But I'm sure in some other runs, I'm not going to be able to get this kind of luck. And really the same goes for the Cabby team as well, but if you get greens, greens give you everything. So it's like... The RNG is the same, but also less, because you're still looking for certain typing of orbs, but if you do get those, then you don't need as many of them to do what you would like them to do. Um, so here, I'm going to use another Veldora, so that's 20% that we've stacked up already with Veldora. And I think I'm just going to orb change again with Frey, because that'll get us another 5 send, and that's perfect. So I'm going to send all these... We still are two orbs shy of both Hero and Milam's ult, and a cheeky counter, because why not? <clears throat> and so 4668, and I think the five hand earlier did like 44, 43, somewhere around there? But okay, so here we go. We have two blue orbs and four nerfed oranges, which, you know, is not the greatest thing in the world, but we're again going to stack up with Veldora. And she's about to nuke someone, and I really don't want Millen to die. So I'm going to flip you out for Rimaru. Rimaru. And I really don't care if Frey dies. Like, she has served her purpose twice already of orb changing. 
But let's go ahead and send these hero cards. That will get her all. Because, yeah, barely. Barely. But we can get her all. And we've now stacked up with Valdora three times. And we have still only gotten one alt so far. That hurt. A lot. Okay, cool beanos. Um, What are we feeling here? What are we feeling? I think we're going to swap Frey out for Milim. And then we can get her alt too. And where does that put us in terms of points? 206 of 220. So we would need 210 to use all four of the big boosts that are on the space team right now. Well, mostly space team. Uh, because we're, we would want to use the attack boost with Rimuru, the crit boost with the hero, Milim's space boost, and then I've got Wind Milim in the back for her alt boost. We would need four extra points, but again, right now, we can easily do that. And we have another Valdora gauge, which I think this is the fourth time that we've stacked it now? Uh, fifth? No, yeah, fourth time, fourth time. 52%, because we start at 12 uh, so let's go ahead and just send these Rimuru cards. That'll get us plenty of points to use everything. And then next turn, turn 8, we can nuke her out of existence. Because I have no doubts that Millen by herself will kill here. How much health does she have? Even with her resistances. Even with her physical and magic resistances of 80% and 147.9 HP. Uh, if we use everything here, we will kill. So let's go ahead and use the attack boost. And then let's go ahead and bring in Windmillum for Space Rimuru, who has no cards. Just notice that. One of my many flaws, I fail to notice orbs all the time. So we'll do that. And then we will go ahead and use the crit boost, the space boost, the dragon form, and that's it. So Millum. With 52% of the, well, four stacks of Veldora, all of the boosts, we're looking at, you know, a relatively reasonable percentage, 62.4 after the Drago takes effect. And it wasn't, I wouldn't say difficult to get to this point. We did get decent RNG with the blues, but we can get decent RNG with greens at the same time. So let's go ahead and just send all these. We're, we're going to kill, like, if she doesn't kill, I will actually be surprised. Level 96 Millum with a 12-star glove on, with the 100 Ranga attached to her. Like, she's going to hit probably like 160, 170k. And again, she has like 147 HP. So we hit... Oh. Well, we barely killed. Okay, well, less than I thought she would do. But we still one-shot her with that ult. So, I cannot be upset with that outcome. So, now that we've seen that... Oh, we got a space core, too. Now that we've seen a reasonable turn limit, that was, what, eight turns? Let's come back into the same stage, and we'll run the Veldora team, and we'll see if we can try and recreate that in the same amount of time. Or less, hopefully. Quote, unquote. Be right back. Alright, guys, we are back... I think I said that in the last part that I would switch to the Veldora team when I was very clearly using the Veldora team, so that's my bad. I meant the Cabby team. So like I said before, the only difference in this team is the protection character, which is Cabby now, and then the orb changer, which is Valentine. So we've swapped one special orb changer for the other special orb changer. And again, the game loves to troll me and give me really, very good hands to start out when I'm not in Conquest, and I'm not trying to do something very, very specific. So right here, we're just going to swap Millum in for Millum, and I think we'll get the Protection Gauge here, and we'll also probably get an ult. We will not get a Protection Gauge here, but we will get an ult. Okay, well, that's fair. <clears throat> Alright, what's that hand look like? I was not looking... Uh, that's not the greatest thing in the world, I'm going to tell you that right now. But we already have an ult with Millen, and I wouldn't say that's because of Cabby. I think that's that's just because of the orb, the start of hand orb RNG. So we can't really count that against Veldora for not giving us an ult turn 2, because <laughs> we got a whole bunch of blues and greens on his turn, so that's not going to get us an ult. But let's go ahead and send the ult, just for funsies. 
And let's try and burn out some of these oranges. Hopefully we pull like another green in this orange and we can use, or two greens in an orange. And then we can use Valentine's Orb Change next turn while Cabby is active. Uh, I didn't even see how much damage I did. Like, I'm not looking at the screen. Uh, that's not what I would really like to see, but it still kind of works. It kind of works. All right, let's let's go ahead and orb change now. And uh, actually, no, actually that does work. All right, so I'm bringing the hero in for Valentine. And now we can use Cabby. And we'll see the difference in what we get here. So... With Veldora, you're pushing for blue orbs, so you can build Veldora up and you can stack that 10% that on top of each other. With Cabby, you're pushing for greens, so you can literally build everything. Like, literally everything. Look, we have another Cabby meter. Look, we're at 100. We have maximum, what, 140 points. Look, we're almost to two alts. Like, that is the power of Cabby, and it, it cannot be understated that if you have the team to push greens, and you have Cabby, you can run the world. But if you are running Veldora and you push for blues, you can stack up your alt, your protection gauge and your damage, but you literally don't stack anything else until you build up Veldora's secondary part of his passive, where he's building up your skill point gain, which is also good, but neither of those is getting your alt fast. And Veldora or Cabby gives you 150% on green for everything right as you activate him. So he's really good for burst output. Like right here, I'm going to use Cabby again. I'm going to flip out Rimuru for you again. I'm going to orb change with you again, even though it costs 50. And we're literally going to make that all back and probably get up to 180 points right here because that's how much greens do. So, let's take a look. Yeah. And look, we have an alt. We have an alt and a half. We have yet another cabby meter. We're at maximum points. It's like, it's this is not hard to do with this team. But the thing is, is that we're not adding any additional damage onto ourselves for that, you know, that final nuke right here. So we're not going, well, that's, okay, that's unfortunate we're not going to do as much damage as the Veldora team is. Like, the straight up. We're going to use the same buffs. We're, we're going to try and get to that point where we can use all four big buffs and the Drago. And Milim is not going to hit 148k. Like, it's just not going to happen. She'll probably hit, like, 98. Maybe 100. Maybe she'll break 100. But we're not going to do 148. And we're not going to one-shot her out of existence because she has too much health. But we've already sent one alt. We have two more alts that we can send here, and we're not hurting for very much right now. Right here is not the greatest hand because I want to save this alt, because I don't want to nuke her with a nerfed unit, and I don't have enough skill points to use all of the big buffs. But at the same time, we still have gotten three alts in the time it took to get, what, like, one? Two, maybe, with the previous team? And we're still on turn 5. So, just pointing that out for, you know, reference, quote-unquote. And I'm gonna send all... I'm gonna send... You guys. Uh, I'm actually gonna flip the hero out, too. And bring in that other green. That's an orange. So, yeah, let's send these. Hopefully we pull a green and, an, and that orange alongside. Do I flip out Millen, too? I actually think I flip out Millen, because I'm not going to nuke next turn either. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Um, do I risk it? Do I risk it for the biscuit? I think I do. All right, we're going to send those. Hopefully we can pull one orange and a couple greens here. Oh, look at that. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. That hurt. Also, look at that shit. Okay. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I misspoke. But, you know what we can do is we... Ah, <laughs> uh, no, we can't, because I, I need her. Um, well... Will this get, what will this get us? That'll get us maximum points. 220, which is what we're going to need. So... 
Let's uh, let's do a little bit of this. Let's do a little bit of funsy onesies here, and we can get a double all with Millum and maximum points. I guess this would be a great time to showcase also that the oh we no, we can't use the rewind because we have everything else to use. So how much health does she have here? I'm ranting a lot. 167,000 HP, so about 20,000 more than she had in the last fight. And I can already guarantee you that we are not going to hit nearly that far. But we do have, you know, this ult. So let's go ahead and let's take you out. No, let's take, let's put you in first. There we go. Let's play smart, not hard. All right, alt boost. And then the hero comes in. And actually, no, I think we had more points last time, because we can't even use the Drago here, huh? Did I just fuck myself? I totally just fucked myself. Alright, we'll, we'll go ahead and use this, and then I'll come back when we actually can use the Drago. That way it's fair. <sighs> well, that's unfortunate. Or maybe it's not unfortunate, because we do have a double ult. You know what? Fuck it. We're gonna send it. We're not gonna kill. Well, we might kill. I am rambling right now, guys, okay? Alright, let's go ahead and send this. How much damage does this all do? 57.2. Oh, we're, okay, we're gonna kill. 57.2 and then 89.1. Oh, we're not gonna kill. We are gonna kill. I'm all over the place today. Okay. So we killed turn 7. And the first one was turn eight. And whoa, the fangs. Oh my god, it's always a delight to see me get fangs. Okay. So, this team, I think, runs very effectively in short term bursts because you were able to build up so much in a short amount of time. Like, if you can get Cabby online turn two, and then you can magically get a whole hand of greens, like, you are at a max 140 skill points, you have almost two meters of Cabby built up again, and you have almost, like, one and a half alts for everybody. That's turn two, if you can get that RNG. Turn two Veldora, if you have godly RNG and you can get him online turn one, you have an extra 10% space damage, and a 50% skill point gain in all your orbs. And that's it. That's it. You're definitely not looking quite like you would be with, you know, triple alts and 140 skill points. Maybe you, may, well, maybe, no, because you'd, no, you'd be maxed out. Maybe you could get back to, you know, 140, if you were lucky. But... It's real. It's less realistic to do that than it is for Cabby, because the 50% is not 150%, and it's already boosting greens, which already gives you skill points. So, I think, again, short-term events, Cabby is better. But if you're going for a long-term nuke, like over over eight turns or so and you get relatively good RNG and you can build up Veldora, you know, three, four, five times, you are going to hit very, very hard. Very hard. So it all kind of depends on what you're looking to do. If you're looking to kill the Sky Dragon on turn eight, I would actually probably bring Veldora. But the Sky Dragon nerfs Blues, which is why I didn't bring him in this test. It's like, it's only this two fights and I'm talking a lot because I have a lot to say. But if I were to take, you know, a team into story mode or something, I'm going to take Cabby. Just because it's easier. He'll clear it faster. You'll get an alt turn two and you, and you win. And it just saves time. So I guess that's the whole point, is they do very different things. One is one better than the other? In certain aspects, yes. But if you were to put them on paper, it's like, who do I think is better? I would probably still say Cabby is better. And you're totally fine to disagree with me on that. Totally fine. Everyone can have their own opinion. People like Veldora more than Cabby. People like Cabby more than Veldora. 100% fine. But personally, I find more use and less RNG dependency on Cabby than Veldora. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. I would like to know 
how the community is split on this and how many people favor one side or the other. But for now, take it easy, guys, and I'll see you later.